dear students i'm ashur sharma your educator in this video we are going to discuss about all the environment conventions and the protocols we are quickly going to revise all of them and then we will also solve two questions that are related to it only so they are pyqs let us first start with the ramsar uh, ramsar convention and you see that it was seen in it came in 1971 it was signed in 1971 for the conservation and the sustainable utilization of wetlands it is also known as the waterfowl convention and india is a part of it so our journey of all of these uh, protocols and the wetlands is is a, from a very long period of time you can just trace it from 1970 we started with it we just realized that the wetlands are um, deteriorating and the water bodies are deteriorating as well so we here upon took ourselves and you know the responsibility was taken that we are going to protect the different wetlands there are different uh, schemes different um, conventions different protocols that we started from this time for the environment right so in this video we will be discussing all of these conventions and protocols we started with the ramsar convention and these ramsar convention these are basically wetlands what are wetlands these are the lands where you know we have these migratory species or these are the waterlands that are the what near the water bodies so these are specific areas that are selected as uh, your um, you know areas as wetlands and these are selected as areas that needs protection there are different criteria and in the class we have discussed about it in greater detail so quickly we are going to skim the different protocols here a detailed analysis cannot be done but you should know that it is also known as the water fowl convention and it is for the conservation and the sustainable utilization of the wetlands right india being a part of it what is your homework you need to write in the comment section how many wetlands are there in india because recently few were added then came the stockholm declaration uh, you should know and don't confuse it with the stockholm convention it is stockholm declaration and it was signed in 1972 and here we see that one very important thing came into being and it is a unep right so the international protection of the environment unep was the result of stockholm declaration it is important about it is important that the world needs to be awakened about the inter, about the uh, environmental problems that we go through so for that the stockholm declaration happened and the united nations conference on human environment was held in stockholm sweden and it was held in june 1972 right so this was a stockholm declaration then came cites cites is another important convention convention for international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna it was signed in 1973 another important convention the control and the prevention of international commercial trade in endangered species and the different products that are derived from them uh, from them so this was the basic goal we were not here protecting the uh, you know the ecosystem directly but here we are looking at the different endangered species and also different activities like poaching that were done also we were minutely looking at the problems of commercial trade because of which the different animals the different endangered species were killed also we looked at the different products that were derived from them it is also known as the washington convention and it is legally binding now what is legally binding and non legally binding legally binding is when the countries that are signing it had taken the responsibility of completing the task that they have taken if they fail to do so they can be punished non legally binding means that you are not legally binding anything if they fail to do so if they fail to come you know complete their commitments then penalty can be there but not much of you know uh, there is not much penalty being thrown on them right there are different appendix so we have appendix 1 appendix 2 and appendix 3 so we have trade permitted only in the exceptional circumstances uh, and 3% of all the species are there under appendix 1 like the african rhinoceros 
then we have appendix 2 these are the species that whose trade are strictly controlled and 97% of all the species are there and then we have appendix 3 the request for assistance on controlling the trade of these species is all of these species whose uh, for whom the controlling should be done are added in the appendix 3 so there are three appendix and this is cites what is the full form of cites cites is the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna then we have the convention of my convention on migratory species it is called as the cms so the convention Uh, the convention on the conservation of the migratory species of wild animals it is also called as the bonn convention it is under the agency of unep so under the aegis of the united nations environmental program we talk about the conservation of the different migratory species of these wild animals so what is the Uh, india's role here so india has signed these non legally binding memorandum of understanding mou with the cms on the conservation and the management of different species like the serbian cranes it was signed in 1998 then there are marine turtles in 9, in 2007 then there are the dugongs in 2008 uh, and then we have the uh, raptors in 2016 so with 2.4% of the world's area india actually contributes to about 8% of the global diversity so it is important that india also takes part vividly in the prevention of all the wild animals and the conservation of the animals as well so india it provides a temporary shelter to several of the migratory species including we have amor falcons we have the bar headed geese we have the black headed cranes we have marine turtles etc so protection is very important and we have taken the responsibility that we will be protecting these species then we have the nairobi declaration it was signed in 1982 and for the achievement of the sustainable development and why was it so important it was important because in the stockholm declaration we had this unep that came up there it was made and this time it was the 10th anniversary of the stockholm declaration that happened so in the stockholm declaration they met in 1972 so stockholm declaration in 1972 they met and after 10 years they are meeting again in 1982 so this means it was the 10th anniversary of your unep that was formed then we have vienna convention 1985 it was for the protection of your ozone layer now this is important why was vienna convention enacted vienna convention was there for the protection of the ozone layer it does not include legally binding regulation goals then we have the montreal protocol 1987 the montreal protocol is again important for the protection of the ozone layer only it is to control the ozone depleting substances here montreal protocol will talk about the ozone depleting substances what are the substances that are depleting the ozone layer these substances it is important and it is in addition to this vienna convention it is a protocol to the vienna convention for the protection of ozone layer so vienna will talk about vienna convention talks about the protection of ozone layer and how the ozone layer is deteriorating and then you have montreal protocol it will talk about the different circum different substances that are causing the depletion of the ozone layer it is a universal treaty it was ratified by all un countries it is legally binding and target only the ozone depleting substances not the greenhouse gases but the different circums uh, different substances like the hydrofluorocarbons that are responsible for the depletion of the ozone layer so montreal protocol 1987 talks about what it talks about the uh, reduction that we should do of the ozone depleting substances then we have the brutland report a very important report it was done by it was given by brutland 
the uh, you know uh, and she came she gave this report in 1987 the report talks about the sustainable development and it was the first time that anyone came forward and defined sustainable development properly so it was brutland report and it talks about the sustainable development and the concept of sustainable development came out now what is sustainable development sustainable development is using the resources in such a way that they are left for the future generation so in the class we have discussed all of them in greater detail i made you write about the signing dates i made you write about when it was ratified and all of these things should be clear it is not that uh, you know the thing was, or the protocol was signed and it was enacted and it came into force immediately so they took some time in that as well when india took part in it all of these things we did greatly you know uh, with you know immense detail in the classroom so we are just brushing up here so i hope you are understood about the brutland report then we have important rio declaration it was seen in 1992 now there are different names for rio declaration what are these earth summit earth summit uh, it is also called as the united nations conference on environment and development uncd it is also called as rio declaration because it was held in rio and when was this held this conference this earth summit was the biggest earth summit that could happen now this earth summit was in 1992 it talks about the environmental con conservation and the development of the environment also it has 27 principles attached to it three legally binding agreements were also signed there and what are these agreements they are cbd then we have the unfccc and then we have the unccd that means to combat desertification so these are the three babies that were also signed during the rio declaration earth summit was the biggest summit that happened at that point of time it was the biggest summit of the, that was taken on the international level earth summit is also called as this unced it is also called as rio declaration and there are 27 principles these principles are talking about the protection of the environment only and then there are three legally binding agreements also then we have agenda 21 agenda 21 was also decided in that earth summit only it was seen in 1992 again it talks about sustainable development it is a product of your earth summit that happened in 1992 and here agenda 21 refers to the 21st century this is itself your pyq once it was asked that what is the reference of this 21 so this 21 stands here for the 21st century and it is a non binding agreement so in agenda 21 is a part of it is a part of your earth summit only earth summit is what earth summit is a summit that talks about the 27 principles for protection of the environment conservation and development of the environment it also has three legally binding agreements we have cbd we have unfcc and then we have the unccd these are the three agreements then we have unfccc it was seen again in 1992 and the here we talk about the reduction of the greenhouse gases so in montreal protocol we were talking about the ozone depleting substances but unfccc will talk about what it will talk about the reduction of the greenhouse gases after the signature or the signing of the unfccc we will the the countries would decide that we will meet every year and those meetings are called as the conference of parties these are the cops for which every year they will be meeting and how are the names being placed so if they are meeting in berlin you will call it as the berlin agreement right so they were meeting in berlin that point of time so with the help of the name of the countries where they are meeting they will write the name of the different cops like we have the paris agreement because it was held in paris like this they are going to name up 
and what is COP? COP stands for Conference of Parties. It was started when UNFCCC was signed in 1992 and from that point of time all the countries decided to meet every year and discuss about the problems that we go through, discuss about the reduction of the greenhouse gas emissions and to combat the global warming. It is an environmental treaty that was also produced when it was produced in the Earth Summit in 1992 only. So, it's also a legally non-binding agreement and your Kyoto Protocol was negotiated under this framework. So, what is Kyoto Protocol? Kyoto Protocol is itself a COP, Conference of Parties. Paris Agreement is also signed under it only. So, these are negotiated under this framework of UNFCCC and it came again in your Earth Summit in 1992. It was a treaty that was produced here only. Then we have the uh, CBD. Now what is CBD? It was seen again in 1992. As I told you, there were other three documents that were there that was signed. So CBD is the convention on your biological diversity. Here we are talking about the different biological diversities like the hybrid seeds. So we need to protect these seeds as well. So, this is a convention that talks about it. There are three main goals of your CBD. What are these? These are the convention of the biological diversity or the biodiversity. Then we have the sustainable use of its components. First of all, you need to protect them. Then you, you need to sustainably use them and then sharing the benefits of the genetic sources fairly and equitably. So, if you have produced something, you should use it fairly and you should use it fairly and equitably as well. It was legally binding. There were three legally binding documents and these, this is one of them, CBD. And USA has signed but not ratified the documents. There are two protocols. There are two protocols to your CBD. So look at CBD was signed when CBD was signed in your Earth Submit. So, Earth Summit is the grandfather. Then what happens? The grandfather is going to, you know, then they, this is the first line of the family tree. Then we have the father. The father is the CBD. Their grandfather will have the three, uh, three children more. Or you can say in total three children are there. What are these three children? The three children are CBD, there is UNFCC and there is UNCCD. These three children can further have more children. So your father can have, you know, is, you know, is having you as well. So this CBD will have two more students, two more children. And what are these? These children are your Cartigena protocol on biosafety. And it was signed in 2000 and it was signed in 2000. And we have Nagoya protocol for your biodiversity accord and it is in 2010, right? So, this is again part of your CBD. What is CBD? CBD is the convention on your biological diversity. It was a part of your earth submit only. Then we have the UNCCD. UNCCD is was signed in 1994 and it is the convention to combat desert, desertification. The headquarters was in Bonn, Germany. It is the only convention that came out from the direct recommendations of Rio Agenda 21 and it is legally binding and one information Canada would view from it later. So here they are talking about the different lands that goes, uh, that becomes uh, a problematic uh, no, it, it is becoming a problematic condition because it loses its fertility. So, we are talking here about the desertifications and how to combat the desertification. Then we have Kyoto Protocol. Kyoto Protocol is the COP3 and it was seen in 1997. Now, why is it important? It is a part of what? It is a part of UNFCC. C. So, it fights against the global warming and what is UNFCCC talking about? So, UNFCCC will talk about what? It will talk about the protection against the greenhouse gases and protection of the environment and under them we have conference of parties. So, your COP3 is one of them. Where was the COP enacted? Where was the meeting held? 
the meeting was held in kyoto so we call it as a kyoto protocol it was in 1997 very important few details are always asked in the paper from this now what are this first of all they are talking about the greenhouse gases and to reduce the greenhouse gas concentration they negotiated it under the unfc see and it came into force it came into force in 2005 so it was seen in 1997 uh, they signed it but it came into force in 2005 their binding targets in inec for the nx1 countries are there there are some ways or some mechanism in which they said that they will try to you know uh, deal with the circumstances and what are these so there are binding targets for nx1 countries while nx2 countries can you know they will try to protect the environment but it is not binding for them so what are the different mechanisms under the protocol so it is the clean development mechanism then we have the emission trading and we have the joint implementation so in the class i told you in greater detail how credit points are given and how developed countries and developing countries can participate in it so it is your kyoto protocol only that recognizes that it is not only the develop you know it is not always the same way in which all the countries are producing the greenhouse gases so the developed countries will we actually promoting a lot more greenhouse gases than the developing countries so some trade off can happen there are different mechanisms that are used as we have already discussed these are the clean development mechanism this is emission trading and joint implementation these protocol implies to the following greenhouse gases like the carbon dioxide we have methane we have nitrous oxide sulfur hexafluoride we have hydrofluorocarbons and we have the perfluorocarbons so we have 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 gases about which they were talking i would repeat we have carbon dioxide very important they we want to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions then methane again very important then we have nitrous oxide sulfur hexafluoride hydrofluorocarbons which are also called as the hfcs and we have the per fluoro carbons and the about the hfcs we talked in greater detail in the uh, your montreal protocol and uh, because montreal protocol talks about the ozone depleting substances the protocol is based on the principle of common but differentiated responsibility so this is again important and it is a pyq as well it talks about shared but differentiated responsibilities or you can also call it as common but differentiated responsibility it is also called as the cdr now what does it stand for as i was explaining not all the countries are emitting the same amount of emissions so all of them will come together and do their own bit so it's a common goal common but different responsibilities is given to everyone there are different responsibility for different countries it places an obligation on the developed countries to reduce the current emissions on the basis that they are doing historically and they are responsible for the current levels of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere so because they have done a lot previously now they have more responsibility nx1 countries are the industrialized countries and the economies that are in transition nx2 countries are the developed countries which pay the cost of the developing countries and non nx countries are the developing countries so these are the different annexes that are also present there you should also remember the different mechanisms and you should also know the different greenhouse gases because questions are always being asked from it right then india was the part of uh, india is the part of the non nx party of the unfcc also what is important is there are two commitment periods now these commitment periods first of all we have 2008 from 2008 till 2012 and then we have from 2013 in fact from 2013 to 2020 and this 2013 meeting happened in Do uh, doha hence it is also called as the doha amendment this is something that has already been asked so you have to take care of this there are two periods 
first of all we have from 2008 to 2012 and then we have 2013 to 2020. The second commitment period was agreed in 2012 and it is known as the Doha Amendment. That is why it is called as the Doha Amendment. As I told you because the name is given after the place the protocol has been signed. So it was the meeting was held in Doha. So it is also called as the Doha Amendment. Now, this was a newspaper clipping at that point of time and Kyoto Protocol became very, very important. It is your COP3. Then we have the Rotterdam Convention 1998. Priorly informed the consent about the hazardous chemical substances and the pesticides in the international trade. So, it is talking about the hazardous chemicals and pesticides. It's a UN treaty which says that there are different, in, uh, the, because of different international trades, there are some chemical substances that are also transported and hence we need to reduce the uh, hazardous substances that are present there. Then we have the Cartagena protocol. It is the child of what? We have already discussed Cartagena protocol and Nagoya protocol are the two students or the two children of your CBD. So the grandfather is Earth Submit, then your father is CBD and you and your brother or your sister are what? Cartagena protocol and Nagoya protocol. So like this you should remember the things. Then let us move forward. We have Cartagena protocol 2000. Cartagena introduces, talks about the uh, protection of the biological diversity from the potential risk that is there by the living modified organism resulting uh, that we should talk about the different modern biotechnology as well. We should make the public aware. We should talk about biosafety. We should give information about biosafety and biotechnology is very important. It is something that we should talk more about. Then we have the Stockholm Convention, not Declaration. It was seen in 2001. Very important because Stockholm Convention talks about the POPs. Now what are POPs? POPs are the persistent organic pollutants. These pollutants stay in the environment and can cause problems. So we need to eliminate or restrict the production of or the use of different persistent organic pollutants called as the POPs. They are also called as the dirty dozens. They are going to stay in the environment and cause problem to the air. This is a UN treaty. US is not part of it. It is the International Forum on the Chemical Safety and the International Program for Chemical Safety prepared the list. So, uh, we have the IFCS and the IPCS together that is the Intergovernment Forum on Climate on the Chemical Safety and International Program on Chemical Safety came together and they created a list and this list is known as the list of POPs also called as the dirty dozens. So we need to protect our environment from these dirty dozens that are going to stay in the environment and can deteriorate our air. So these are the different chemicals that are you no know, excreted from the different industries. They can be byproducts of industrial process resulting by the process of incineration. Now what is incineration? Incineration is the burning of the extra waste that we had. Because of the burning there are so many there are so many substances that are released like the fly ash, right? Then we have different chemicals that are used in the agriculture part like the pesticides all will come together and these POPs are very harmful because they live in the environment for, the, for a very long period of time and can cause a problem not only in the air but it can also leach down because in the water and the ground water can also be contaminated. The compounds from the volcanic activities can come out. These are causing problem and can cause problem to your respiratory tract maybe because of the drinking there can be problems. So these are your POPs. For example, a very good example of POP is your DDT which has now been banned. Earlier we thought that DDT is very helpful. It's a very good pesticide. 
but we realize how harmful it is and we ban the use of ddt or other substances like eldrin right so you should know about these read more about pops now this is a list of some pops they can ask you about different pops they can also ask you about uh, the new pops that have been added so this list is right in front of you like the texafine or we have the chlordine we have the eldrin we have the hepatachlor or uh, eldrin these are few of the pops like the ddt that will stay in the environment and can cause a lot of problem then we have red or you can say the red plus it's the red data book that we should know about and it was seen in 2005 redu it talks about the reduction of the deforestation about the forest degradation as well that is seen in the developing countries it was negotiated under the unfcc and it was seen since 2005 so un red has was launched in 2008 india did not participate in it and then we have reddd plus that is also that was defined in the bali action plan that was cop 13 so this red plus was extended and it talks about the sustainable forest development and management so we have the sustainable forest management conservation of forest and enhancement of the carbon sink so under this only we want now the management of the forest management to think about the carbon sink also so we want the additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion so that the uh emissions can be extracted and the balance can be maintained then we have the nagoya protocol 2010 assess to the genetic resources and fair and equitable sharing of the benefits it came out in 2010 again a part of your cbd the second child of cbd it is a supplementary to the agreement of your cbd convention on biological diversity then we have rio plus 20 so rio plus 20 was seen in 2012 so we had the first rio that we had the rio declaration it was seen in 1992 then we came forward in 2002 also we met once uh, and then now we are we they were meeting again in rio 10 and this was rio uh, plus 20 so first of all we had rio then we have rio plus 10 and then we have rio plus 20 we discussed in the class right so now this is after 10 10 years they are meeting again and after after 20 years they were meeting in rio plus 20 it was a, again a conference talking about sustainable development it was the 20th anniversary of the earth summit or the rio earth summit okay the, so they started with rio first of all they happened they conducted it in brazil then again they shifted the place to johannesburg so this happened in johannesburg rio plus 10 again they came back and decided that no no rio is good so they had the conference in rio it is called as rio plus 20 so they started in 1992 then we met in 2002 and then we had 2012 right and what was the theme about which they were talking there was a meeting and the name was the future we want so this is also important the future we want then we have paris agreement paris agreement is itself a cop when did we started talking about cop it was seen again in 1992 when unfcc was there and from this unfcc came again a cop called as your paris agreement very important in 2015 we signed it and it talks about the climate change it came into force in 20 uh, and it will came into force in 2020 it is not legally binding there are few aims now what are these aim the this century we talk about here about the global warming that would rising so uh, that was rising and is rising as well so we said that the global temperature rises well below it should be below 2 degrees celsius and above the pre industrial level and then we have the efforts that should be made further and further so that we can limit it to 1.5 so here make it 
So yes, we have to stop the temperature at 2 degrees Celsius, but we should make more and more efforts so that we can reach the goal of 1.5 degree Celsius. There are some India's NDCs. These are the nationally determined contributions. I've already made one video for the NDCs and how we have updated the NDCs in COP26 that happened in Glasgow. These are the old NDCs that India gave. So each country will talk about their own nationally determined contributions that this will be my bit to protect the environment, to protect the emission of the greenhouse gases. So India in 2015 said that the greenhouse gas emissions per unit of our GDP would be reduced by 33 to 35 percent below 2005 levels by 2030. So comparing it to 2005, we will reduce it. Now the targets has changed. You can uh, have changed. You can go to the video that I made previously and you can look at the new NDCs. We, uh, we, India also said that by 2030, 40% of the energy would be made by the non-fossil fuels. We also talked about the carbon sink equivalent that would be maintained. So increase in the forest cover would be there and additional sink or uh, the carbon sink would be created for 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide that is emitted by 2030. Also on the broader level, we said that there will be zero emission. There will be net zero emission and this would be till 2017. Right, then we have, we have the Kigali amendment. It was seen in 2016 and it was a revision of your Montreal Protocol. So in Montreal Protocol, we were talking about the ozone depleting substances for the different ODCs. These ozone depleting substances like the hydrofluorocarbons, like the perfluorocarbons should be limited. So here, your Montreal Protocol was revised. It was amended. Montreal Protocol that was seen in 1987 was amended in 2016 called as the Kigali Amendment 2016. It talks about the reduction of the ozone layer and how it, the aim is to reduce the hydrofluorocarbons, the use of the HFCs by roughly 80 to 85 percent by 2045. So 2045 is the latest date where we said that 80 to 85 percent, 80 to 85 percent 85% of the hydrofluorocarbons that are what? It is another ODC that is the ozone depleting substances would be reduced. It will be a bind, it will be a, it is a, a basically a binding agreement for the different countries from 2019. Right, so we started with our journey from where? We started with the journey from Around 1972, that was so important for us that we had the Stockholm uh, Declaration there. In the Stockholm Declaration, we came up with the United Nations Conference on Human Environment, UN. You know, this convention talks about what? This convention talks about the protection of the environment and it is called as the Stockholm Declaration in Sweden. So, we had the United Nations Conference on Human Environment. Then United Nations Environment Protocol, that is UNEP was established. UNEP was established and this was called as the Stockholm Declaration. Then we will be meeting again and again to celebrate the birthday of UNEP again. Then again we met 1973, we decided that we will protect the flora and fauna. So we have sites. Then we have the Convention for the Conservation of the Migratory Species, CMS. Then the World Climate Program was established in 1980. Then we have the IPCC that was also in uh, also established, and it is also important. Around 1989, we have the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change (IPCC) that was established. Then we have the Basel Convention. It talks about the different hazardous substances. No, uh, the syndrome of not my backyard came into being here. They said that this waste is not mine. Each country was fighting against the hazardous substances. Then in 1987 came the Montreal Protocol, which talks about the 
ozone depleting substances then india's worst nuclear uh, you know accident happened and it was seen in 1986 then we have the vienna convention in 1985 then we have the united nations assembly that will adopt the world charter for nation so around 1982 and in the class we also discuss this charter we discuss what all were the things that they were talking about the nature then in 1990 first ipcc assessment report came it talked about the global warming then we have in 1992 very so many things happened it was the earth summit that happened at that point of time that happened in rio so it is also called as rio declaration united nations conference on environment and development it happened there in brazil and rio janeiro then we have the other things that was signed there is the u that is the convention on biological diversity we have the united nation conservation on climate change unfcc then we have in your we have the united nations uh, conference to combat desertification in 1994 then from here under the unfcc we decided that we are going to now meet again and this is how we came up with the conference of parties we will be meeting every year and we will be deciding how the environment can be protected against the greenhouse gases then in 2001 stockholm convention talks about the pops these are the persisting organic pollutants then in the rotterdam convention 1980 1998 we also talk about the convention of uh, uh, for the protection of the different species then we have cop 3 1997 kyoto protocol then came what then we had the nagoya protocol in 2010 then we have minamata convention what is minamata convention it is the protection against the usage of mercury then we have uh, then we were here then we have your 2015 in 2015 happened the paris agreement where we had the agenda to limit the pollution to 1.5 it should be 2 2 degree celsius but we can go further to reduce it to 1.5 degree celsius then we have the kigali amendment this was an amendment to your montreal protocol then the sixth ipcc report came then in 2001 again the new ndcs were given new ndcs were given by india nationally determined contributions it happened in glasgow and then in 2022 stockholm 50 plus convention well uh, it also happened right so this is basically the chart of how you can see the different conventions and different protocols to protect the environment how we started with all of these things now this is the first question that i have for you in the first commitment period of kyoto protocol how many greenhouse gases were covered for reducing their emissions so 4 5 6 or 7 how many greenhouse gases were there i told you there are six greenhouse gases for which they were talking what are these greenhouse gases we talked about carbon dioxide we talked about methane we have nitrous oxide we have hydrofluorocarbons perfluorocarbons and sulfur hexafluoride so the we have different um, commitment periods in the first commitment period we, it was held from 2008 till 2012 and again in 2012 meeting would happen at doha so it was called as doha amendment and another commitment period would start another question this is the list 1 and this is the list 2 this is again a pyq montreal protocol earth, uh, we have rio summit then we have kyoto protocol paris agreement and we have to match with the agendas they have uh, environment and sustainable development reduce the emission of the greenhouse gases then we have climate change mitigation and adaptation and we have ozone depletion so again very easy we know c is the right answer let us match a with your four i have discussed this in greater detail what is montreal protocol talking about montreal protocol and vienna protocol both of them will talk for your ozone depletion and ozone depleting substances so you can match a with 4 and by doing this you can strike out the other options only two are left now you have earth submit now 
and earth summit talks about the sustainable development we have the reports for sustainable development earth summit or the rio summit is the biggest summit that was held in 1992 for the protection of the environment environment and sustainable development after the brutland report so it be with one so you already have your answer but let us go further kyoto protocol kyoto protocol is your cop 3 it is your cop 3 it will talk about the greenhouse gases all of these conference of parties are under the unfcc so it would be matched with what with the reduction of the greenhouse gases paris agreement another cop it talks about the climate change mitigation and adaptation so it is 3 d with 3 and we have this as the right answer c becomes the right answer so i hope you understood these are the different protocols and different agreements that we signed for the protection of the environment in the class so many other things were also discussed it was not feasible to discuss everything right now but you should revise the things that we have been discussing because from questions are definitely asked from this segment so i hope you understood and this was very clear to you if you have any doubt you can write it in the comment section and i'll surely reply to you thank you